Whether you need mock-ups for your own graphics and branding work to win your sales calls or presentations, or you want to make some residual income selling mock-ups online, mock-ups are one of the best ways to present your work professionally. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own mock-ups using stock photography and the most efficient way to organize your layers in Photoshop using smart objects and color changing controls to make them easy to edit and reusable for yourself and your clients. So if that sounds good to you and you're ready to level up, let's get started. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and the first thing we're gonna do, um, we're gonna be working with two uh, graphic mockups. We're gonna be mocking up a shampoo bottle and we're gonna be mocking up a t-shirt. So in order to get these photos, we're gonna go on over to pexels.com and for the first photo, we have this shampoo bottle right here and I just typed in the word shampoo and I'm gonna down and I downloaded this one right here. And for the second one, I typed in the word t-shirt and found this picture right here that I like because it's gonna allow us to easily change the color of this t-shirt. Now you can change the color of like white and black shirts, but that's a little bit more um, steps involved. So we're just gonna stick with a t-shirt that's already colored um, for this tutorial. So um, let's go ahead and hop in Photoshop and get started. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is make a selection of this shampoo bottle. And for that, I'm gonna be using the object selection tool. And that's found under quick selection. If you click and hold that, you have the object selection tool, the quick selection tool, and the magic wand tool. I wanna to use the object selection tool and make sure object finder is select up here. And that's gonna show you what objects are in this picture. So it's finding the wooden background. It's finding parts of these leaves. It's also, also has all the leaves together and then it has just this bottle. So I wanna click right there and I'll give it some time. Okay, and it's made a selection of that shampoo bottle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna press Control or Command G on the Mac to group those. And then I'm going to create a layer mask. Now this group is gonna be for all the edits we make to the bottle. So adding the graphic, changing the color, things like that. So let's go back to our move tool right there. You can also click V to get back to it quickly. And I'm gonna name this group right over here. I'm gonna name it bottle, all right? So, and we're, you, we're gonna get into that too because you wanna name these layers to make it easy for people to recognize what's going on in your uh, mock-up when they use it. So this is gonna be called bottle. Now, everything inside this bottle group is gonna be clipped right here to this mask. And that just makes it a little bit more easier so you won't have to have a bunch of layers with different masks. We're just gonna uh, mask everything inside of this group. So, and the first thing with this blank layer selected, we're gonna go to adjustments down here and go to solid color. And we wanna choose like a dark blue. Color. I'm gonna choose something like that. That's fine. And then I'm gonna change the blending mode. I wanna use one of these in the darken group. So darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, and in uh, darker color. I personally prefer a linear burn for this graphic. I think it works the best. It looks the most realistic. As you can see here, it's darkened. It's very flat. Multiply, it's okay, but the shadows are not as defined. Color burn is okay, but it's also a little bit too contrasty. The brights are a little bit too bright. And linear burn seems to work best. And uh, you can just control how dark it is. Right now it looks really, really dark, but you can just use the fill right up here and just bring that down and I'm gonna choose something about right there. So that's at about 89% fill. All right, so now you're gonna double click and rename that layer to uh, bottle color. And anyone can just go in there, easy double click that and just change the color, mess around with that and do whatever they want. So I'm gonna stick with that blue for right now. So the next step we're gonna do is just get a graphic and throw it on here. So I'm gonna use this fresh logo that I created a while back, but it's still <laughs> pretty fresh. Um, and I'm gonna throw that on here. Boom, just keep it flat. Don't change the perspective or anything yet because you wanna make the perspective and everything easy to edit. So I'm gonna place it right there. It's flat right now. And I'm going to change this to graphic. I'm gonna rename it to graphic. 
Now, what we want to also do is just to rasterize it. Very actually, let's let's make it a little bit bigger first. Maybe make it like this, and then right click it and go to rasterize layer. Um, also, if you don't have right click, you could also go up to layer and then rasterize layer from there. Um, now, next thing that I want to do is to hold Control or Command on a Mac and click the new layer icon in order to create a layer below it. And what I want to do is select that blank layer and the graphic layer together, holding control or command on a Mac. And then you want to convert those to a smart object. You can right click, convert to smart object, or you can go to layer. And we're going to go to smart objects, convert to smart object. All right. So that's going to give you this for your graphic layer. When you double click on that smart object, it's going to open up right here and that's going to come in handy we want to, whenever we want to swap out the graphic easily um the person can swap that out now i'm going to uh play around with that a little bit later but for right now next thing we want to do is to get the placement of this graphic um to be correct with the perspective of the shampoo bottle so i'm going to press control or command t in order to transform this and the first thing i want to do is just to rotate it to line up with this bottle so to get it to where it's just about right. And I'm going to make it a little bigger because I like big and bold graphics. That's just me, baby. And next thing I'm going to do is to right click and go to skew. And I just want to line these up with the perspective of this bottle to the best that I can see. Just line those up, move them to where they kind of match the bottle somewhat. And then I'm going to go back to scale. And just, I'm sorry, scale. Whoops, that's not working right. Make this a little bigger. All right, when you're done, you can click this check mark or you can just double click or press enter or return. All right, so now the last thing we want to do to this graphic is to get it to blend a little better on the bottle. Right now, it looks very flat. It's not adapting any of the lighting and shadows that are happening to this bottle, so it looks pretty fake. So what we want to do is going to double click on that graphic layer right here. And we're going to go to we're going to that's going to open up blending options. So I'm going to leave that to the right a little bit so you can see what's happening to the bottle. But we have these two options under blend if gray. You can blend the current layer or you can blend you can blend this layer based on itself, which is the current layer or based on the underlying layers, which would be the only thing underneath this graphic is the bottle, right? Because that's what it's on top of. So what I want to do is to remove this graphic layer everywhere we see the shadows or the dark places of the shampoo bottle. And so for that, we want to remove the underlying layer shadows, which is this dark black part right here. So if we click and drag this slider, you'll see it started to be deleted everywhere where there's more dark areas. But we won't we don't want it to be that dramatic because that looks horrible. What we want to do is hold alt or option on a Mac. And we're going to click and drag the right side of that slider. It'll split it in half. And now you can let go of all the option. And you want to play around with this right half of the slider to get it to be removed on those shadows. So you can take it as far as you want. I'm going to do about right there. You can also move this left end and that'll make it a little bit more. You don't want to do it too much to where it looks kind of ridiculous. So I'm going to stick with about that. That looks fine for me. You can play around with it to your heart's content. I'm going to click OK for that. So now that you have it properly blended, you have the graphic on there. The last thing you want to do is to make this easy to edit for anyone who opens up this mock-up. So in order to do that, what I love to do is hold Alt or Option and click and drag this um, graphic layer all the way to the top. I hate it when I open up a mock-up and I have to open up all these groups and things to find just to change the graphic, which is usually what people just want to do when they download a mock-up. They just want to change the graphic. They often don't play around with a lot of the other things. So, and I'm going to rename this layer, which is called graphic copy. I'm going to name it change graphic. You can also do something that people do where they, they'll just say click here, change graphic, something like that. And we want to hide this layer. It does not need to be visible because it's a copy of this smart object. It's these smart objects are linked. So whenever you change one, the other one will be changed. So all they have to do is double click in there. They can place that graphic in here as I'll show you real quickly. Let's do this. 
actually let's do this one let's click and drag that from uh, illustrator into here and we're gonna blow it up and I'm gonna hide that other layer click save and then close that and as you see it's right in there on top of the bottle at the same perspective that the other graphic was so um, there you go as far as that shampoo bottle graphic so whenever someone opens this up um, you know you can just save this um, they'll say click here to change graphic they can easily click in there to change that and then if they want to play with the bottle they can open up that folder and change the bottle color so that just makes it super accessible and easy to use so the next mock-up we're going to be doing quickly is this t-shirt mock-up and the thing I like about this is that first of all the t-shirt is colored so we can easily just shift the color left and right as we want to in order to play around with that and um, also his shirt is at an angle so I know sometimes you might get a mock-up that's just like flat and you just place a graphic on a flat shirt and you're like well what if the shirt's not flat what if the person's turned or something how do you manage that so we're going to play around with that a little bit and um, see how to do that. So the first thing we want to do is follow the same kind of steps. So we're going to use the object selection tool. And this will actually make a selection of the man. So what we want to do is to hide the object finder really quickly. And we're just going to draw roughly around just the shirt. Photoshop will use artificial intelligence to guess what you're trying to select. And usually it's pretty on point. So let's do something like that give it some time and it's made a rough selection of the shirt now you as you notice there are a few glitches in here let's press Q to open up quick selection it's selected part of his arm down here and his entire elbow over here so press Q again to exit out that we want to hold auto option and just drag over the parts that we don't want selected give it some time okay and then we want to do the same thing over here. As you notice, I'm using the space bar to create this hand tool just so you can move around quickly in your image. And I'm using Alt or Option on the Mac and just using a scroll wheel on my mouth to zoom in and out. So I want to hold Alt and drag over that part of his arm. All right. And I think that's a pretty decent selection. Let's press Q again to see that. Okay. Boom. And you can go around and play around with it some more if you want. But that's fine for me. So I'm going to just first of all press control J just to jump that selection to a new layer and I'm going to rename this t-shirt because you really just want a selection of the t-shirt itself so you can use that for um, any lighting or shadows you might want to do later but um, let's get to that a little bit later so press control or command and click the thumbnail of that layer and we're just going to open up um, adjustments solid color and kind of like last time, but this time, let's go with a different color. Let's maybe give him a, maybe a, you know, I think that blue is working. Let's do blue and let's change the blend mode to hue. All right. So that's just going to keep the, the brightness and darkness of the shirt about the same, but just change the overall color. Whereas if you use the color blend mode, that would actually shift the uh, the lighting in the shadows to match the exact color that you chose so here's color and here's hue it's a very slight difference in this case but if you use brighter or darker colors you'll really start to notice the difference so I'm just gonna use hue and I'm gonna rename this layer to shirt color and as you can see you can go in here and just play around with the hue of that shirt and I actually kinda like that one um, let's do that Okay, so now that I have the shirt, I'm going to um, add a graphic. And uh, what we're going to do is actually, let's move this, this mask. Let's press Control or Command G and move that mask there. And then let's delete it from here. All right. And we're going to call this T-shirt. Or you can even call it Change T-shirt, Shirt Color. Now we need a graphic. So let's go in here. Let's get the Combrew vertical logo and let's paste that in here let's just paste it as a layer we don't want it as a smart object in this case you know I actually didn't want that I wanted to paste pixels so let's cancel that it's going to be freezing on me for a little bit and it's crashed so sometimes that happens <laughs> when you're working with uh, Adobe Illustrator files and you're trying to paste them as layers you'll get a crash 
And this is actually not good because I actually might have to restart the entire tutorial, but let's see what we can do. So let's go to don't send. And we're going to open up Photoshop again. And I'm just going to fast forward this part in the video so we can get right back to the tutorial. Okay, so here we are. And I just pasted it as a smart object and I'm going to just make it a little bigger. All right there. And then we're going to call this a uh, graphic. I'm going to rasterize that layer, create a new layer below it. Select both of those and convert to smart object. And that's going to be our graphic layer. Now, so we're going to do what we did last time, control or command T. And we're just going to play around with a skew. Skew this a little bit that way. But just maybe a little like that. And maybe move it up just a little bit. Let's put that there. All right, so that's already looking better, but we're, we still need some shadows and depth to the graphic. So again, we're gonna double click on it and to open up these blending options. And we're going to remove the dark parts of the underlying layer just like last time. So let's, a little bit of that. And we're gonna move this slider over a bit. Okay, just so it really starts to blend. And I'm just going to zoom in so you can see that. So here's the before, here's the after. If you want to make it a little bit more noticeable on the shadows, you can always go down to the t-shirt itself, create a curves layer, clip it just to the t-shirt layer, and then play around with the darks. You're going to just make the shadows a little darker, right? So that'll help those shadows to stand out a little bit more. And uh, here's the before. Here's the after. All right, and so the last thing we're going to do is just like last time, we're gonna take that graphic layer and hold our option, drag it to the top, and just rename it, name it to something like change graphic. I put it in all caps so people can make sure they see it, and then just hide that layer. And then anybody can just double click in there and change the graphic, and it'll be changed right here. So if you found this tutorial to be helpful, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment below letting me know if this has helped you or if you have some more tips and methods to make this a lot easier for people. And be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss a, my next tutorial and let me know what you want me to teach you next. So until next time, remember, take chances, make mistakes and create something incredible. God bless.